James's microphone. Oh no. Oh no. He can solve I have this. no idea if people can hear me, if they can see me. It's all good. They can they can hear you now, and now they can hear me. Because I'm always plugging and unplugging my microphone into different USB ports. And whenever I do that, it's like USB 2 versus USB 3. And I was like, oh, OBS, <laughs> remember. Ah. We're live. It's happening. It's, it's all here. Everything is good. <laughs> yeah, just kind of work through all the issues. No problem. Oh I was like, gosh. I sent everyone the, the, the link to Skype and... Uh, and I was like, I'll, I'll send you a link five minutes before it's happening. That was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then he couldn't see me. And then he thought it was my fault, but it wasn't my fault. It was James's fault. So whatever. Blame, blame game is not, is not worth it. Don't worry. About it. Uh, well, I'll, everyone, I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. This is another Xamarin Community Stand Up. Uh, it's the second uh, Thursday of the month. Uh, we're usually on the first Thursday of every month. Uh, if you go to live.net, you'll see the community links there. You'll find past episodes. You'll also see all the upcoming shows, which is cool. Any framework team just did one uh, yesterday, which is cool. And next week we'll have um, ASP.net and also, uh, I think, languages and runtimes. So if you're into C Sharp, F Sharp, all that stuff, which is really cool. We should do a reca uh, recap of F Sharp Conf, which was last week, which is cool if you got to see that. Um, but yeah, we have an amazing uh, update. I'm James Montemagno, and I have the two most amazing people in the entire globe uh, with me. David and Maddie. I'll let them reintroduce themselves. <laughs> I'll just go simply because you said my name first. Sure. Uh, David, Principal Program Manager for .NET Mobile SDKs. I've been throwing the .NET in there because it seems like I don't do much with Visual Studio, but I do a lot of things with .NET. So I'm, I'm co-opting it. I don't know if it's official or not, but that's the way it is. And uh, my partner in crime here, Maddie. Hello, I'm Maddie Legere. I'm a PM on the Xamarin team. I focus on our tooling story. And that's the things that hopefully make you more productive. But you know, I, I get to look more and more at the .NET world lately, which is exciting too. <laughs> awesome. You have a lot of people that maybe are brand new to the stream uh, to the .NET community standup. So if you're brand new, uh, the .NET community standups happen two to three times a week on live.net from all the different .NET teams. Uh, Visual Studio team, the Languages team, the, the Windows Desktop team, the Xamarin team, that's us. Um, the ASP.NET team, the, the EF team, like everybody does all the time. And there's sort of two parts uh, usually to the call. The first part of it is kind of all the amazing things that you, the community, are doing. So Maddie's going to go through all those and all the amazing links. And then after that, we usually have a cool demo of some sort of just something that the team's working on or was just announced. And today, I believe David's going to do a whole .NET MAUI introduction. If you missed the build announcements with yep. David and Maddie, literally, the, that is the exact two right there that I was, I've been rewatching the GIF, <laughs> did a presentation last night with the, the GIF of, of you two and your little Zamagons <laughs> over and over again, which is great. Um, and that's the standup. So we, we, sometimes we announce new things randomly or we're working on things or the team's working on things or the engineers on all that stuff. And people are asking, why am I using Skype? Great question. We usually teams use teams for all the call. However, the very first time we did this, uh, I, I just had my surface book two and my surface book two with all the other things seem to kind of slow down a little bit. So right now I have Skype on my Mac, my personal MacBook Pro from 2013. Uh, and I, I would use Teams on there, but I don't want to enroll it into Intune because it's my Mac. <laughs> so um, so I'm, I'm actually piping Skype through an Elgato HD 60S capture card for video and audio into my Surface Book 2, which just is just OBS and me. So if I needed to share my screen or do something like that, it, it all just works. That's the setup. Live streaming is fun. Yeah. I mean, if anybody is uh, now, because you're probably working from home and looking to upgrade your systems, uh, pretty much all of us <laughs> now have a laundry list of cool gear that we can recommend and some gear that probably we wouldn't recommend. So feel free to reach out on that too. We, yeah. we totally geek out on which camera are you using and how is your, what's your light set up and how do you, how do you, yeah. What do we all it's have? Fun stuff. Uh, uh, Maddie, what are you using today for your for your video audio setup here? Uh, well, I have the same mic as you, the the um, blue blackout spark. I think yeah, it's I called. think that's right. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. And then my cheapo Amazon pop filter, and then the blue arm. It's mm -hmm. really nice. And I have the Logitech Brio webcam, and I also have those really cool Elgato key lights. But it's like the perfect bright, cloudy out today, so I didn't really oh. want to turn them on and ruin the natural look. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a nice clacky mechanical keyboard, which has become like the most polarizing thing I think in meetings is who does and doesn't have the clacks. Uh, yeah, that's me. David is the one with like the, the odd mic out though, between the three of us. That's true. Yeah, it is a little different, isn't it? This is a PR Heil 40, PR 40 Heil. Um, yeah, it seems to work out well as long as I make sure it's uh, appropriate selected in the software that I'm using. Um, and it was a kit. It was a whole podcasting kit with the Scarlett uh, USB uh, connector. I need to get a cloud lifter, which is a, yeah. is a new term to me. Um, and so uh, I actually mentioned it recently, and somebody said, I have no idea what a cloud lifter is, and you're in good company. Um, it, it essentially is boosting your signal a bit. So like right now I'm, I'm clipping on my, on my mic. So hopefully that's not causing distortion problems, but if I even back that down just a little bit, it's all goofed up. <laughs> Something what, was that? what was that? <laughs> David Apparently got a blurry all, on my screen and it oh, looked was great, blurry. but I had to send it. <laughs> that, that is, that's modern art right there. Uh, it really I'll tweet that out later. And I also have the uh, Spark Blackout microphone with the uh, blue pop filter, as you can see here. I have a Rode arm uh, because this came out before the blue arm. Uh, and then uh, I'm also speaking through the other computer on my blue Nessie. I'm a big fan of blue, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I seem to do good stuff. And I'm using a GoPro Hero 4 as my webcam today uh, through a Elgato capture card. Uh, that is because uh, I don't want to buy a very expensive camera. And this GoPro I purchased <laughs> a long time ago and never used it. So it's perfect now. It as, has more use ever in its entire life. I just watched a video from Alpha Gamer who was comparing the different webcams versus the GoPro Hero 3 or Hero 4. Pretty good. I mean, the lighting. I also have the natural lighting coming in, so my key lights are off. So mm-hmm. Usually because I'm in front of a big window now since I moved uh, offices. Uh, but yeah, that's the setup. Anyways, let's get into the good stuff because uh, I got a I got a, a bunch of meetings later today. So Matt, you want to go for it? <laughs> kind of forgot yeah, I had to work at some course. point today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so you might be wondering why this is the second instead of the first uh, week of the month. I think there have been a lot of events going on in the world in 2020. 2020 has been very long. Um, and one thing I wanted to do today is actually dedicate the community section to highlighting uh, black people in our community and the .NET community that you may or may not be familiar with. I like to think that I do a good job making these things pretty diverse, our community stand up. I, I feel like I put in some effort to make sure I'm trying to dig up new people and not doing the same group every time. So I thought this was actually gonna be easier than it ended up being. And a lot of that is just because I am not as integrated into black tech Twitter and uh, a lot of these communities that than, as I should be. So this is kind of my first step to get more familiar with people in, in Black Tech Twitter and, and Black.net Twitter and communities and definitely point me in any resources you have and feel free to drop um, in the chat as well any blogs that I, I don't have here. I found a good amount. I'm actually really excited about sharing a lot of these. Uh, and the first couple here, oh, the link, the link list as usual, I'll put this in the chat, paste. Uh, they're all here. So are the PRs that David is gonna show and um, uh, some other links. But the first thing I wanna show is what the .NET Foundation website is linking to, which is the Equal Justice Initiative. So if you go to the .NET Foundation.org site or whatever it is, you can uh, click on this link and go and learn more about it. I think this is a really good place to donate if you're still looking for a place to donate and you're in a position where you can donate right now. Um, this is a really good place to go that's been that's been vetted and and is right now currently being endorsed by dot net uh, another thing is that someone is uh, i can't remember the name of the person who's organizing this but i do follow him on twitter which is how i found this but there is a call for speakers open for the juneteenth conference which is going to uh their mission is providing a judgment-free space for underrepresented people in tech so I think this is going to be a really great thing. It's going to be on Juneteenth and end the 20th. So uh, feel free to check it out. And if you think you'd be a good fit for this call for speakers, go for it. The link is in the URL list. Um, another thing is that the the woman who co-opted the Black Tech Twitter hashtag has recently started the Black Tech Pipeline. So you've heard the pipeline problem phrase before, I'm sure. If you are someone who is in a position where you can hire folks, I think this is a really good place uh, for you to go check out. It just launched a couple of days ago, but I'm, I'm sure it will pick up a lot of steam. Uh, Microsoft Developer 
Twitch. I almost said Twitter, but it's Twitch. They did a uh, a talk yesterday called Moving Forward as a Community with Cecil Phillips and Philip and Brian Clark. So I thought it was pretty interesting. I honestly only caught like 15 minutes of it, but I, I thought it was really nice and well thought out. Um, and I would definitely recommend taking the hour or so to watch this if you're interested. And if you are looking for more resources like I am, The Verge had a good article about movies, about racial injustice that I put that link in because this was a really good comprehensive list for me. Just, you know, what's easier than watching a movie, right? It's a pretty easy way to learn about how to be better in society. So you can check that out. Um, into the blogs, translated to English. This one's by Leslie Ramirez, and it's publishing your apps from Visual Studio to an app service on Azure. It's uh, pretty good. She kind of breaks it down into the issues that she faces. So deployment issues, runtime issues, all these different things. Um, and I thought this was a really nice, not super long, but still pretty in-depth article about some roadblocks you might run into uh, when publishing to Azure app services. One other blog that kind of fits in well here is by Richard Burrs, and it is how to choose an Azure app service or an, an, a solution for deploying your apps. So um, this is another kind of like in-depth, he goes through the prerequisites, why you should be using Azure AD for your app deployment, all these different things. He does a really good job explaining kind of the different components of this, the app proxy solution. Um, so I really, I really like reading this. I learned a lot when I went through this earlier. Um, just like terms that I assume I know what they mean and then I actually read a definition about them and I'm like, oh, that's what that means, cool. Uh, let's see. So. This is Richard's blog. I, we, he's someone we've highlighted a lot in the Xamarin community. He's awesome. Um, hi, Richard, if you're watching. I hope you are. This was from the end of April. It's creating a smarter application with Xamarin, Azure Cognitive Services, and ML.net. So kind of combining. Oh, I actually have to click into the blog. Oh, no. Okay. It's just this. I couldn't figure out if I was on the post page or on the, um, the, the full blog. So yeah, this is a cool little article about what he's planning on doing with Xamarin, Azure Cognitive Services, and ML.net. So uh, Richard is really good at blogging. I'm sure he'll continue to do this and, and follow on Twitter. Uh, so you can check kind of his progress with here. I think it was an interesting idea. Um, what's next? Oh, this is uh, an older blog from Sinclairinator, but he is someone who I have really looked up to kind of in the past couple of weeks as a a uh, person on Twitter that has been really relatable and good good for educating me as a white person right now. And this is actually an issue I ran into and this blog solved my problem back in February. So I was really, really surprised that I was debugging a customer issue. I don't have an ARM processor, unfortunately, but uh, there is actually a way to run Hyper-V in Windows on an ARM processor. And this blog was something I could point to. It was very exciting. Um, and and is very cool. Let's see. Oh, Rodney, this one was very helpful for me. I I was not an MVVM developer when I started at Microsoft. I I part of the reason I choose I chose because it was a Maddie. Uh oh. Yeah, she went robot. Robot, Maddie, come back to us. Maddie, about, let the bits oh. flow. How about now? Oh. All right, we're good. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. It just started torrentially downpouring outside my house. So that's <laughs> why I have antenna internet. Um, oh. Yeah. It's not great. But what does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. When it's not raining. Um, yeah. Yes. This is a great blog by Rodney because I was not an MVVM developer when I started. And I notify property changed is like the most confusing thing in the world. And then I was just one of the people who was like, oh, they all kind of mean the same thing, right? No. Okay. So he answers the question that I have definitely run into before. Oh, stop raining. Somebody, somebody turn the rain off. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like how you used to get your television over the air through an antenna and you still can today with HD. Most people don't back? know that. You are back. We were, we were talking about what is antenna based internet. Okay, good. I only have three more. Worst case scenario, I'll just join from my phone once I get through this, but so you can see my facial reactions. Um, I'm a huge fan of Sarah Cooper. 
Hanselman got to interview her on the podcast. So sick. I actually have her book. Oh. <laughs> How to be successful without hurting feelings. It's a fantastic <laughs> read. Sorry, guys. And she's a comedian, so it's very funny. Right. I would highly recommend reading. But Hanselman yes, interviewed her. I think that's sick. I wanted to put that in here. This is by a good friend of mine, Gav. Oh, almost there. <laughs> No, she's super funny. I've uh, been enjoying her, I guess, TikToks, and they get summarized on YouTube channels. Uh, gotta let, gotta have something to laugh about. She's moving on. Do you want me Am to I... narrate over the top of you, Maddie? I can just like pretend I know what I'm, these like, things are. Like totally out. You're back. Uh, you were this back. is a great blog. This is by Stephanie. Also a great <clears throat> blog. <laughs> no, don't ever do it. That or Comcast, and the Comcast is really expensive, and you have to. Do so, hold on, I'm joining from my phone. We can do this. Technology works. Yeah, when I first got internet where my family lived way out in the middle of nowhere, it was uh, satellite internet. Um, not even like the DirecTV thing. It was like a whole dedicated satellite, for, like the big dish. <laughs> my Maddie. <laughs> I need to, hang on, I got to take a screenshot. Oh, you yeah, got moved. I'm sure. I'm sure everybody else's uh, remote meetings all go super smooth, and this is. <laughs> Would you like to move on to PRs or Maddie? Do you have more? Is your audio even working? We can see. No, that's audio. it. Don't talk because oh. you're going to get. That's it for the. Move on to PRs. <laughs> all right. I'm going to. Uh... I'm going to switch screens to my other desktop. So, James, if you can make sure that I am uh, showing this to everybody. It it must. Can you not? Is this like a Teams thing where Teams can pin? Uh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Right. I did it on my OBS. So Teams has this cool feature that you can pin people, which is nice. But anyways, all right, cool. All right. So uh, I saw this one on the Xamarin Android uh, repository, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, we When we uh, did all the build announcements, um, there's a lot of people saying, oh, what about Linux? Linux got missed again, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, there's lots of places where Linux shows up in our products. And uh, we enable Linux developers. <laughs> Maddie's camera angle is cracking me up. That's the mechanical keyboard right there. I love it. <laughs> I, can, I can hear it in my heart. Um, so, so this is a, a great one where I, I imagine it wasn't actually too much work uh, to enable building Xamarin Android on Fedora. So that's pretty pretty awesome. I don't know if Fedora is a, a popular distribution. Uh, used to be. It's a cool hat. Um, that, should, that demonstrates how little I actually know about uh, Linux. But um, yeah, so tons of Linux things happening in our community, uh, especially in the Xamarin Forum space where developers want to use the GDK Sharp. Um, so jumping over to Xamarin Forms, and maybe I'll bump this up a little bit. Try to. Yeah, there we go. Um, so... Joe Mankey's at it again, adding more Maps love uh, for uh, all of those who use Maps. Maps is a very popular piece of Xamarin Forms and a common thing that developers will use. So drag and drop pins, pretty lit stuff here. Um, as a matter of fact, there's some there's a zip here. I guess you can go open and check out what the screenshots look like. A couple people have added some reactions here. So typically, always very good contributions from Joe. I'm sure this uh, will get in pretty soon. Date picker, 
Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we have an intern that's working with us right now, and we're looking at uh, localization, internationalization of dates and date pickers and time pickers and things like that. So I have been uh, thinking way too much about pickers lately. Um, as a matter of fact, I couldn't sleep last night. I was thinking about pickers. Um, but Peter has uh, made a contribution here for WPF. And uh, I, I several of these PRs actually are for the community-supported, community-contributed backends for Xamarin Forms. So of course, we have Android, iOS, and UWP for Windows. Um, but there's also Mac OS and WPF and GDK Sharp, and then Samsung has the Tizen platform. And I was noticing that a lot of things uh, over the past 30 days were, were being PR'd to these other backends, which is pretty interesting. It always leads me to want to know exactly what everybody's building with these things so I can understand better how it's how it's being done. So, so Peter, uh, famous for his contribution of the media element, has introduced a, a date picker with font support or, or font support for the date picker, which is awesome. So you can see down here. Uh, the custom fonts and things like that that you can add. Um, as a matter of fact, as I looked across all the PRs and the different platforms and kind of the spread, I think it was 25 pull requests were for Android, 23 for iOS, uh, 15 for UWP, and then 8 for macOS, 8 for WPF, and 8 for Tizen. Um, so that was that was interesting to kind of see the spread of where where focus is going. So even though Peter uh, did the media element, we have Yuri here from the Ukraine um, who has sent us quite a few pull requests across Mac OS and WPF, which is interesting. Um, and so this enables a media element for Mac OS. And That's there's me. our favorite. That's me. There's our favorite presenter, James Montemagno. Yeah, I think that's actually the demo video for the media element in the control gallery. <laughs> I, so. It's 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 funny too because I uh, I really dislike this video. I think that I I, I remember <laughs> this day specifically. I was like the the colors were a little bit odd. The uh, I, I feel like I, I look very wide uh, in my in my in my hoodie, I, I, and I, mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling it. I don't know why. I was a lot of excited. I think this is like Pierce did a GIF one time, and, and that's I think so of the yeah of the hands. Uh, it's it's yeah. a trademark, oh, uh, James. Yeah, the, the it's the beard that stands out to me. I mean, you look like you're ready. No, to go we got a raid from C Sharp Fritz. Oh my goodness! Ooh, welcome all nice. Fritz, Fritzinators. Well, welcome everybody into the Twitch chat. Uh, David is going through some community PRs. It's the Dynamic Community Stand Up Xamarin Edition. Hope everyone's here. We're gonna go through some uh, PRs, and then we have an awesome. I think demo on Don on Don Dan Maui. So hang around for that. Some awesome announcements from Build. So boom, awesome. Welcome everybody. Yep, just a couple more PRs to get through here, and then we'll we'll jump over to some of the announcements from Build. Um, so uh, implementing cursor position on WPF, another WPF one, and actually I think we saw two or three here from Tessa Roli. Um, so yeah love coming to these other platforms, which I really uh, appreciate, especially on the Mac OS one, because that feeds right into the .NET MAUI, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, anything that we can improve and take care of in Xamarin Forms is going to make our lives a little bit easier as we make the transition to MAUI. Um, so export font functionality. This is something that we introduced in the last couple of versions, and it's, it's getting better in every version, but you can drop fonts directly into your shared library uh, rather than uh, messing around with how Android and iOS do those things in platform-specific ways. Um, and our, uh, our library will just take care of it for you. So it makes it a whole lot easier to integrate custom fonts into your applications. You just do it in one place, and it just works. Well, which is how we all love things to happen. So um, this brings that same love to Mac OS. Look at that. Beautiful custom mono That's font cool. right there. I think mono font cool. is I just, the font uh, you have to use. I just shipped an update to my stream timer, multiple updates for Mac OS. And I was using um, Xamarin Forms version 4.8 pulled from pull requests uh, from Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> I was fixing dark uh, theme support, which was fun. But this is going to be yeah. great because I use Font Awesome everywhere, and I can't wait to actually put this in and, and update that application. And it's been working really well, so very cool. Excellent, yeah. Um, for those who may not know, we do actually have nightly uh, a nightly nougat feed from Xamarin Forms. So as long as all the tests pass, a new night a new nougat will be published, um, and you'll get all the very latest things that have been merged into the main branch. All right. Yeah, Gerald needs to merge um, that dark theme support because it totally works great. Do it. 
Do it, Gerald. I ship my app, but everyone already has it and they love it. Do it. Ship it. Ship it. Um, so there are some in- improvements and updates coming for the dark mode. Did you get the on on theme binding stuff or do you know what I'm talking uh, about? I didn't use it, uh, okay. but Gerald ended up going through and fixing like all when it changes to have it automatically update. So I just don't set any colors anywhere in my application and sure, Mac OS sure. just handles it automatically for me. So that's what I okay. did. Yeah. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, of course, but this I did is the see, video that everybody's going to want to go see. I did see your demo and also Kim Philpotts. I want to do a shout out to Kim Philpotts on Twitch. Um, I wish I had some ways of doing that if, if, uh, a sword can uh, drop a, a Kim Philpott's link in there. He was building some brand new applications and he used all the new stuff and it blew my mind. So that's all I got to say about that. It was yes. really cool. Yeah, it is very cool. The, uh, the one note on the, the app theme support is that that API has changed pretty radically. So uh, it's still very simple, still very easy to do, but it works a hundred percent. And so, um, if you are using the app theme support as it existed previously with app theme color, it has changed. So, but we'll, we'll be featuring that and highlighting that in the upcoming 4.7 release, which is actually preview four going up today, um, which includes some new shapes stuff as well. I don't have that shapes image here, but maybe Maddie, if you could pull that out of the uh, the chat channel and, and share that with folks, that would be pretty cool. Um, essentially, we were able to take a really cool sample from WPF shapes uh, docs or code and just plop it right into Xamarin Forms, and it, it just worked, and it was, it was cool. Um, okay, so uh, I'll have a AKA to get to this, but this is uh, the presentation that Maddie and I gave as part of Build, uh, where we cover all the latest things in tooling as well as the SDKs. I covered Xamarin Forms 4, which is up to date, and then 5, which is our plans for the next couple of months. And then, of course, we talked about .NET MAUI, which I want to talk about here next. Um, and then, of course, uh, check out the blog for the links to all of these things. Uh, perhaps that's the easiest way to get to it. Uh, the journey to one.net is a really important one for us uh, in the Xamarin space and Xamarin community to be aware of and to understand .NET 5 and .NET 6 timelines and the changes that are coming for us. All really good news and good information, um, as well as the .NET MAUI plans and what that transition is going to look like for us. It'll be super good. Um, so please uh, watch that video, uh, and it's entertaining, as always, from Scott Hanselman and Scott Hunter. And then uh, we have that deep dive down here that I mentioned. And there are several other sessions that were kind of here and there, Q&As and um, focus groups and things like that. So more links, more links, more links. And we had, I think, six, seven or eight different Twitch live streams from Xamarin-specific content uh, uh, presenters. So that was really cool as well. All right. So that's it for pull requests for the moment. Um, and so I want to jump over and give just my quick my quick recap on what we announced at Build. I was speaking to a customer yesterday. Oh, you're probably seeing my. Are you seeing the actual thing? Or are you seeing the presenter mode? You're seeing the actual thing. All right, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, it freaked me out when I saw presenter mode, which is fine, but. Um, so no, I was no, speaking I see, to a customer I see, the, I see the I see the right thing. I see the right thing. Good. My bad. Yeah, it finally uh, caught up on on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, so this customer, uh, I mentioned, you know, hey, when we go to .NET Maui, and they said, I don't know what you're talking about. And you know, we we often think to ourselves that everybody in the Xamarin community, everybody in the .NET community, is you know riveted to the to the to their screens watching the announcements that we make at Build, and that's actually uh, we find that it's often not the case. Um, which also kind of speaks to, hey, you know, if you're in the Twitter bubble and the social media and, and the community that you, you work in, you have one perspective on what the whole world thinks. And it turns out, and we find, Maddie and I find this a lot, James as well, we speak to customers across a broader spectrum um, of, you know, industry and what kind of developer, some nine to five and that's it. Uh, their angle to think. All right. So. We're evolving. People have been examining evolve for a long time, and and here it is. <laughs> so we're evolving, and it's part of this journey to one dot net. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that dot vastly unifying. Yep. Oh, there we can just donate. Don't update.
So Almaden in the YouTube channel is asking where to find the WPF for Xamarin. It is in the Xamarin Forms repository. If you platforms folders, you'll find WPF in there. Um, and there is actually a kind of a getting started preview doc on the documentation that explain how to how to bootstrap the WPF to run Xamarin Forms. Uh, Andy Walter in the YouTube chat. When will Xamarin Forms WPF be supported on .NET Core? That PR got merged and it works on .NET today. Go go check that out. It was from uh, Conrad Miller, I believe, if I remember correctly. Submitted that PR. Yeah, the uh, the YouTube looks pretty. Are you ready to get back into the office? I'm going to unplug a few things here, and I'm also. Going I can to... hear the I can hear the fan going crazy. Yeah, that's the MacBook actually. Funnily enough. Is it? Um, okay. 
All right, I think we're maybe okay. <laughs> maybe. All right, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. <laughs> I think we're back. All right. There we go. We're back. All right, so I I think that my I think we're good. Yeah, we're good now. I just unplugged my webcam, unplugged my phone, unplugged I unplugged everything, dropped the bit rate, changed the software decoder, and we're good again. Woo. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's uh, us. let's sprint to the end. Who knows what else might happen? <laughs> no, no, you're good. We're, we're flexible, you're good. no, it's and nice. we sound better. I think it's good. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about what .NET Maui platform app UI is in this new world of the journey to one .NET. Um, so you can see that it's desktop and mobile here on the uh, beautiful image, and we've got our bot on a surfboard, which is important. But it's cross-platform native UI. So the 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 value proposition of native UI is absolutely core and central to what we're doing. Um, and then we're also going to enable some really cool new experiences, which I'll touch on briefly, which is single projects, single code based. Um, the existing multi-project solutions that you have today in Xamarin, you can absolutely still use. Those aren't going anywhere, but we believe we can uh, really supercharge the experience and vastly simplify it uh, to, to align better with how we think about building cross-platform applications. Uh, certainly, you can deploy to multiple devices, mobile and desktop, as I mentioned. So we're targeting Mac OS, Windows, Android, and iOS. I don't think I've ever said it in that order before, but there you go. Uh, and it is the evolution of Xamarin Forms. And so Xamarin Forms is now six years old. Uh, it has a very strong and active user base, um, and it's growing. So as a matter of fact, I saw a report recently that we just hit a uh, an all-time high. Um, I know that well, we're trending higher and we have the highest customer satisfaction ever, developer satisfaction. But that, you know, I say all those things as an encouragement, not to say that we've arrived. We haven't arrived. We've got plenty of work to do and we're going to keep charging ahead. So .NET MAUI is another step, another evolution here for this. Um, and it is starting from an existing uh, point of success that we have. But uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about where you can go to participate in what .NET MAUI looks like as we make that evolution. When are you going to get this? This is targeting .NET 6, which is going to ship in November of 2021. So we have a, a good stretch or good run up here to make this transition to do it smoothly and to do it in the open with your feedback. So I really hope that you'll come participate with us. Um, many decisions are not made, and, and we're going to be having all of these discussions in the open. Of course, we're also talking behind the scenes with customers directly um, to understand real value and impact on all of these things. You can go to the GitHub here, .NET MAUI. Um, I highly recommend you do. We've got lots of really active, strong conversations around such things as, hey, are we going to uh, potentially rename the controls and the properties to match the UWP or the WPF or the WinUI naming? Um, are we going to adopt the XAML features that we like to use in WinUI and WPF and UWP? Um, and how can we evolve these things moving forward to, to help be more productive? Um, there's also great conversations about consistent UI. Um, are we going to be able to have controls that look and behave the same across any platform? Or are we only going to have native UI? Um, so some really good conversations there. And we have some, some things in that particular space that we'll be sharing in the near future. As I mentioned earlier, we have that shapes uh, coming in 4.7 for the native graphics drawing APIs. Um, so we'll be very interested in seeing how we can leverage that to uh, enable you to create the designs you need to create across multiple platforms. Um, so this is the, uh, once again, this is the same video that I mentioned before, but this is the AKAMS if you want to take a snapshot of that, and you can go check that out, but you can just go to our blog as well and link to it from there. So you do get the same XAML and MVVM model view view model that you enjoy today. Many developers enjoy this. Um, but I will tell you this, and I probably should have included a slide here from the post-build surveys. Um, I asked the question, 
what pattern, if you could choose any, would you prefer to use in .NET MAUI? Would it be XAML and MVVM? Would it be C Sharp and MVVM? Would it be C Sharp and some kind of a model view update, which is more consistent with the Elm architecture and um, fabulous? If you're an F Sharp developer, you're aware of that immutable UI from our good friend Frank Kruger. Um, or would you be doing reactive UI in C Sharp? Or would you prefer Blazor? Like you want Blazor to rule all the things. The most interesting thing is, is that we didn't restrict it to just one preference. Um, and I, at first I thought that was like a mistake. We should have made people choose just one. But what was really telling, um, and this may, may be a surprise to you, it may not, but most developers did not choose just one. They said, yes, I do like to use XAML and, and MVVM, but I also would like to be able to do C Sharp and, and Reactive or Blazor or C Sharp and, and some kind of M model view update. Um, so <laughs> giving developers choice is a key piece of the whole .NET strategy moving forward. We're simplifying the things that can be simplified and unifying them so you don't have to make choices you, you really shouldn't need to. But when it comes down to what makes you most productive as a developer, we understand from talking day in and day out to so many developers and so many customers through one-on-one -on -one interviews, through surveys, through interactions on social as well as off social, that uh, we, have a, we have a pretty broad spectrum of ways in which developers feel most productive. So while you do get the XAML and the MVVM, uh, we're also going to enable some model view update and fluent syntax stuff. So why don't I go ahead and pop out right now and demo that for you. So first things first, I'm gonna come over to my command line. So I've got my iTerm open here. And uh, just to show you, there's nothing up my sleeve. There's nothing in this folder. And so I'm going to do a .NET, if I can do this right, .NET new Maui application. I'm gonna give it a name. Ooh, ooh. Typing with a microphone in the way, you can never quite see your fingers. Shouldn't be looking anyway, but this is the old Mac keyboard. Um, and I'm gonna call this stand up. So this will scaffold out my project and give me a .NET MAUI project. So you see that it's using the new system namespace, system MAUI, or you will see when I open this up. So uh, I'll go first into that folder. You can see I currently still have uh, Android and iOS folders in here and my shared library project. I'll do a NuGet restore. And that'll restore all of my NuGets across this and I can open it up. And I'm gonna open this up in VS Code because part of the strategy for .NET developers is, hey, where are you most productive? What choice do you want? You want a choice of using a simple text editor or you know, simple is, is uh, underselling the value of VS Code for sure. Um, or do you want the full IDE experience in Visual Studio? Um, and you get both, so that's cool. All right, so we have done our restore. Let me go ahead and open this. So here we are in Visual Studio Code and I will shoot, 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 zoom in. And you can see that really I have very little here in my shared project. Um, I've got a main page. Um, it's using the system.maui namespace. And I'll dissect a little bit of what's happening in here in a moment. Um, and I still have the Android and the iOS projects. If you were using the single project and we merge all this work together, then uh, you would not see all of those things and we would give you a slightly different experience. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. So I hit command enter, which is just a, a nice Mac shortcut for starting things up. Uh, I'm gonna go for the iPhone 11 that I've already got running here. And while that's loading up, let me talk a little bit about what we see here um, in the editor. So the main part of this Fluent UI syntax, and this is inspired by a experiment that we've been doing called Comet, um, where we're looking at things like Swift UI and Flutter and React Native and saying, how might we uh, learn from those things and provide a similar kind of fluent development experience that's all C Sharp and is all hot reload enabled and what can we learn from the model view update uh, work that's already out there to incorporate those ideas in as well? Um, so you'll see that doo -doo -doo -doo, it's loading. The body is the bulk of the work here. It's gonna load a navigation view with a V stack and some spacers. So you can see that uh, I can go ahead and increment my count. Uh, it's to the- David is over the, is over the button. It's, it's over the button. That happened actually during build go. as well 
where Maybe Maddie was, was over the button. Maddie was my floating you make action your button. Font a little bit bigger too inside of VS Code. Command plus. Editor. Command what? I just command end plus. up doing this. Oh. Yeah, but if I do command, I plus, command plus, doesn't it just does the whole thing. the whole thing? Yeah, you're right. I know. I hate right. that. Uh, how did you do that? Would you? What was your command? You you hit. This is uh, I do. I do shift games. command P, which brings up the the uh, options here, and then the uh, most recently uh, used one that you can see is my editor font. So <laughs> then. Nice. Okay. Perfect. All right. Cool. Uh, so you'll notice that I I centered that and it did not. Uh, remove my state. My state's still there. I'm still counting, right? And I can I can do other if things. I want it at the end. If you want, want it at it the end, the at the far right. Oh, you can just go to the. I guess it's the right. Is it the right or the end? Yeah, that's it's the, right. the right. There you go. There you go. So, uh, but but I can do better than this, right? I I like to have good designs. I go up to uh, whether it's Dribble or Up Labs or anywhere, and I I find good designs that I can use. So this is the same uh, demo that I did uh, during build. So I'm going to stop this because I'm going to make some changes outside of the body. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in uh, a gradient, a linear gradient, and then I will need to uh, resolve some things here. See if I can remember. My resolution. We're using Maui graphics, and I don't remember what I did last time, but I'm going to do this because this worked when I retested it. Somebody else can judge me because then there's like a space namespace conflict. Um, hot, so then I, I already hot bits. hot bits, yes. So and this is a vision demo, um, and so to be very clear, this is not we're not shipping this right. So this is just kind of giving you an idea of where we're thinking and where we're going to uh, start heading. So I've got a, a larger uh, snippet of code here. Let me go ahead and, oh, oh no. I was just wanting to fix my indent because that starts to bother me. Oh, what happened? That was interesting. All right. So fixing my indent. So uh, this time around, I'm using a Z stack. So some of these controls are shortcuts for other controls. Um, this is not necessarily the control naming and things like that that we will be shipping. We'll be talking more about that. Um, but these are, uh, you know, Xamarin Forms controls under the hood or .NET MAUI controls. The controls are all shared, um, but how you use them is a learning that we have from doing both the common experiment as well as the Blazor mobile bindings. So uh, I've got this code in here. It's doing the uh, shape view in the background of the Z stack and filling it with that linear gradient. Um, and then I've got a slightly different look to this counter. So I'm going to go ahead and fire that back up. Get that back onto my device, and whoops, I guess if I move that too far over then, well, I can move this over because now the button's going to be at a different place. Um, and one of the really great things about uh, this, which we'll end up diving into more in the future, is that uh, this these extension methods here and getting into these, uh, it's really easy to contribute new functionality to .NET MAUI through these, as opposed to the way today you have to end up doing custom renderers. In this world, there's no custom renderers. You can do everything you need to do in this shared code, and you don't need to go anywhere else. So that's really cool. Um, so let me add, uh, you know, I think 12 lines of code is probably uh, aggressive for me. So let me add a new button here. And we'll go ahead and um, be less aggressive. <laughs> uh, I amuse myself. Um, and so then we'll update the uh, count. Whoops, coconut count value. And we'll decrement that puppy. Give that a comma. And you'll see that it just it up upgraded or updated immediately. Now I can bring that back down, bring it back up. And you see it's, it's really good looking UI, good colors, the whole deal. So... Um, this kind of gives you a taste for where things are going. I do actually have, uh, I'm not showing this now, but you see that the debugger's running, the call stack's running. Um, so a lot of good good prototype work is here. Um, we'll be working on productizing this as we move forward. If this is of interest to you, we definitely want to hear your feedback on that. Um, let me now jump back over to the PowerPoint presentation. we got a few minutes left. I said, let me jump over to the PowerPoint presentation. There we go. I know, I wish these things were all voice activated and or just responded to what I told it to do. Um, so 
I mentioned previously, and this is something that I would ask Maddie to talk about, but she's on her phone, and who knows what the uh, over-the-air antenna is going to do. So I'll do my best to speak to these things. But as I mentioned, you do have the multi-headed projects in the solution, but if you want to, and what we're going to be driving for is this much simplified single project. So you can see in the solution here that it's all just in one place. Uh, we are doing this by using the new project features that are available to us. We're updating to the system project or SDK style, sorry, projects. Um, the new namespaces are there. And then because you only have the one project, you don't have to worry about setting different startup projects. You just go to your play button. And now whatever platforms you've decided to support are going to show up in that list. So you can see that I've got an iPhone next to a Pixel, next to Windows. Um, and of course, I'm on Windows here, so there is no Mac OS. That, that uh, is still a requirement to be on a Mac to do Mac OS. So how would you handle things like fonts and images? Well, we can give you a consistent place to put those things, or you could really put them anywhere in your project. But we're experimenting with what if we have a resources folder that's a known folder, and you can put your fonts and your images there. And then we'll do the right thing to automatically detect and generate the different sizes for those images. Um, but if you want to have fine tune control, you certainly can do that and say, OK, my original size is this. Uh, it also supports SVGs, which I know is something that uh, developers have asked for for quite a long time. So it's PNGs, uh, SVGs, JPEGs, et cetera. And then what about your platform-specific code? You still may have need, in many cases, to be able to get to the Android, iOS, Mac OS, UWP, uh, Windows, WinUI, whatever, um, whatever it happens to be. And, and so you'll still be able to do that using uh, multi-targeting. Um, we're thinking that the platforms folders are a nice way to organize this, but you're certainly not, again, restricted to this. It's a matter of kind of setting a, a simple starting point, and then for your more advanced scenarios, you can organize and, and uh, the architecture, the structure of your project as it meets your needs. So really excited about that. We're doing some current investigation. There's a nice thread up on the .NET Maui repository if you want to come talk more about those things. Um, I'm going to slide through these pretty quickly because I really just demonstrated these things already. But the namespaces will be changing, the project system, uh, the project template names will change, the CLI is a new thing available both for .NET MAUI projects as well as Android and iOS. So really the big takeaway here, if, if, if this is the only thing you hear, the big takeaway is, is that what you've known as Xamarin today is being cemented directly into the heart of .NET. It is .NET. It always has been, but it's kind of been seen as kind of perhaps something that was off to the side or auxiliary. Um, but that's not the way it is. In .NET 6, everything is cemented right into the heart of .NET. Um, and so our namespaces and everything reflects that. How we treat them, how we talk about them reflects that. It is .NET. Um, and so I want to talk about kind of building the base. What can you expect in this transition? We're going to be doing many of these things. I'm not going to talk about each and every one of them. Um, but in the in you know coming streams and and community standups and over the course of the next 18 months, as well as conversations on the GitHub, we'll be talking more about what these things are and what we're going to do. Many of these, uh, like removing the obsoletes and the slow renderers and the pre-app compat, we have issues up describing what that means and why it's important and why you probably want those things. And so if you have concerns or or you want to give it a big thumbs up come on up to the GitHub. Uh, fixing some of the other things like and expand and min height request or width request and just the request part of it. Um, all of those are things that we're discussing as well. Um, so lots of really great things happening here. So it's not just a rename of Xamarin Forms into MAUI, um, but it is actually a, a, a looking at the architecture of it um, and, and you know, kind of redoing it for the future. Redoing it's probably the wrong way to say that, but yeah, I think you understand what I'm saying. Um, we're setting ourselves up for the future here. Um, this is also on the GitHub, so I highly recommend you go check this out in terms of what's that transition from Xamarin Forms to .NET MAUI going to look like and from a comparison standpoint, what's supported, what's not supported, what experiences are being enabled. Um, and so this is kind of just a side-by-side -side comparison of just a few of the things, a few of the differences, but the ones that are probably of most interest to you. Um, so you can kind of get a look for that. So with that, I think that's kind of all I wanted to cover today. I wanted to reiterate those major announcements. Let me go back to the full me. Um, mm -hmm. 
I wanted to reiterate those major announcements so that everybody kind of uh, was reminded, or if this is brand new to you, you kind of know what we're talking about. Um, the main thing I would encourage you to do is go up to github.com slash dot net slash Maui. See the conversations that are happening. Give things thumbs up. Uh, give us your reactions. Let us know what you're interested in. Um, one caution is it's not a wishing well. Uh, so, you know, let us know what you're interested in, but we can't, we're not genies. We can't grant every wish, but you know, we definitely want you to participate and get in on it. And either Maddie is reading an email or she doesn't like what I just said. <laughs> no, Did that's you do that in meetings? <laughs> uh oh. The Maddie's oh, internet's still going great. And then I unplug my other webcam so I can't go back to dual screen mode because I think that that's what was slowing it down. So then I have my microphone over here. This is a community stand up because that's what we do here. Um, it's all impromptu. Yeah, a lot of good questions. So, uh, um, I'm, we can go back in history here. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff. Cool. Uh, I can only do so much on my phone. Someone was asking about Xamarin Essentials. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, we're actually really working extremely close with the BCL team, uh, the base class library team to evolve that into, uh, uh, very much a core package for everything. It'd be like something like system.devices or system.device. We haven't finalized that just yet. Uh, but you know, Xamarin Essentials will continue on, just like Xamarin Forms will continue on going up into this release and then support afterwards. But you'll sort of see it move forward there, um, which is great. Uh, I'm really, really excited. And uh, working with that team, there's a lot of stuff that's already in the BCL that just didn't work as expected on mobile. So they're just going to fix it and just be like, oh, yeah, just make it work great. Um, um, so I answered that question. That's good. Uh, Subin Dev was asking if XAML is dead, and I believe that you mentioned that right at the beginning that there's first class support for XAML, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and you know, yeah, there's a there's a, a really good conversation. Well, there's a there's a passionate conversation happening on GitHub. Definitely come participate in that. It's not going anywhere. It's we know that that's where a lot of developers are, and they enjoy it, and they're productive with it. Good to go. Um, yeah, I see the other like question Lewis. here about uh, yeah. native controls. Go ahead. Maui is still oh, yeah, using native controls. That. Absolutely. Um, but we're also looking at more and more what we can do to support, uh, you know, the consistent UI desires across multiple platforms. As a matter of fact, if you look at checkbox today and radio button, you'll see that we're already using graphics APIs to deliver those experiences where they don't exist. Um, and in 4.7, as I mentioned, uh, we have a whole new shapes and paths API that's coming to you. And then we have gradient brushes all using native graphics, but giving you that option to start templatizing your native controls. Yeah, super, super important there. In fact, there was like a, a Luis was saying, you know, there's a lot of trends in the industry. You have a Swift UI, Jetpack Compose, Flutter, declarative UI kind of moving forward there. And, and we haven't really seen any, we've seen the C sharp extensions that are there, but there hasn't, you know, this is going to be the big opportunity to, um, um, start not necessarily fresh, but, you know, look at what does that look like in the world of C sharp, right? How does that apply across? The frame with hot reload going forward, which is really, really great. Uh, and has me excited too, even though I do love my XAMLs uh, back and forth. And you can mix and match your things too, which I think is really cool. In fact, a lot of times I have a lot of mixed and match just C sharp files, you know, for settings pages or things that like just was easier to type up really quick than having uh, a really complex long XAML. So um, it's kind of like how you want. I think you, you know, we're kind of meeting developers where they're at and what they're asking for and going forward, which is, which is cool. A lot of people asking exactly. about like third-party control, Skia Sharp, all that stuff. I mean, it's really supportive. We'll work really close with any of the, you know, MVVM Cross, Prism, you know, Sync Fusion, Telerik, all, you know, community members, all that stuff going forward. So, um, yeah. I, I only have so much awesome. history in my on my on my computer on my on my thing here. Yeah, I've closed everything. <laughs> everything is closed, <laughs> so that way the stream is good. Uh, and there's quite a lot of questions around some C-sharp features. I would also recommend Mads and um, Dustin gave a great uh, session on C-sharp 9, some of the new features coming in C-sharp 9. So definitely check that out too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an interesting question here. Does MVU mix both view and business logic together? Um, so I, you know, in terms of the way that you see it being done in the samples that I've just shown, um, there's a little bit of that. There's, there is no view model. Um, you could put a view model in there if you really, 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 really wanted to. But the question is, is does it need to be there? 
Um, as a matter of fact, I know that in the reactive UI chat, uh, team chat and community, there's been some discussions. And I think Annie Betts is one that has asked the question, like, do we even need this? Do we need this complexity or can we deliver the kinds of apps we need today uh, without, without a view model? And just, you know, it handles what it needs to handle right there in the view. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think that that's a clear-cut answer, but it's it's certainly a topic that's of interest as we evolve these things. Yeah. Yeah, and I think and the, and the evolution the is based on customer need. Sorry. Yeah, and if you look on other kind of communities, um, you know, web de web development and other other platforms, there's sort of been a base that has been applied, and then you see other technologies pop up on top of it, like Redux and obviously react has stuff, but there's a bunch of different architecture patterns that apply on top of it, um, which seem to work very well. So, uh, there too. So I wouldn't see why those couldn't apply in very similar patterns, uh, there too. So I wanted you to talk about the rendering architecture changes. Yeah. So, uh, so when we talk about the render rendering renderer architecture changes, we're talking about the renderers themselves, uh, not how the pixels get onto the screen, but how we architect the controls themselves. Um, what you have today in Xamarin Forms is you have renderers that make a strong assumption that you're doing MVVM and data binding. Um, and what we've learned through working with the Blazor uh, team and Alon working on the mobile Blazor bindings, as well as with James Clancy and the Comet experiment, is that that introduces overhead um, or brings along with it overhead that is just not not used, not needed, um, and we ought to be able to get away uh, get away from it. So. What we're doing is we're, uh, this was actually in the side-by-side -side columns that mentioned this a little bit. We have a tight coupling right now to the bindable object. We are going to be uh, making that loose and uh, introducing the ability to kind of flip the inver uh, invert the relationship between renderers and the core shared controls um, so that we can enable more experiences like a Fluent UI model view update or a Blazor. Um, and, you know, we're also, we have some interactions now with the fabulous team to see how we can benefit F sharp there. Um, I mean, I, I'm seeing these conversations happening. Thankfully, we have a great team. I don't have to uh, be a part of every single one of these conversations. Um, but that's the primary uh, change there. So it has some pretty clear benefits. Um, we're moving away from uh, the custom renderer kind of architecture to a mapper. Um, and so I think in a future episode, we'll have James Clancy on and we'll start talking more specifically about what that means. Um, there is a pull request that shows a spike for this work on .NET MAUI GitHub, as well as an issue spec that describes what that change is um, and what it looks like for you. Um, of course, then once once you hear me say something like uh, moving away from the custom renderer, you might have custom renderers and you're like, oh no, well, what does that mean for my custom renderers? We're, we're, we're looking at how we can provide shim layers or at least uh, easily adapt those to move forward with .NET MAUI so that you don't lose any of that code. Um, and so we have we have some proof of concept that shows that working today. But, you know, there's a lot of work between uh, here and there to do that. Related to this, there was the question about, okay, well, what does this mean? Can we have Skia Sharp renderers? Um, so as I mentioned, you know, shapes, we're introducing native graphics libraries. So one of the questions is, uh, for me, that I want to kind of suss out here and figure out is, does that actually solve kind of these, these questions around being able to do Skia Sharp? Because drawing is drawing. Skia Sharp, of course, is a cross-platform drawing library. Um, it brings some, some weight with it. Um, but we'll, we'll certainly be looking more at that. Uh, if you've looked at the Comet um, experiment, you'll see that there are Skia Sharp renderers in there, um, not for everything, but for a lot of things. Um, it, it includes some level of accessibility support, which is an important consideration when you leave behind custom controls and you start, or you leave behind the native controls and you go to a drawn situation. Um, and so, you know, all, you know, again, it's driven by customer and developer need, what your demand is for these things, what devices you're targeting. Um, and that will all inform where we uh, in, you know, put our investment. But also, of course, if anyone were to come to Xamarin Forums and say, hey, here are Skia drawn renderers for everything. You know, certainly if it meets the bar of, of code quality that we need to have, um, we would bring that right in, no question. Um, 
MVU is currently updating the whole page, even if you just update just the text button. So the, the way that most MVUs, well, I'm not, a, I'm not a great person to speak authoritatively to MVU. I'll just say that right off the bat. But um, one of the key things to most architectures or frameworks that implement some flavor of MVU is that uh, you're working against a shadow DOM and there's a diff between the actual UI and the, the DOM that's in, st in your state object. So you're not touching every single thing on that screen. You're applying diffs. Um, so it's actually quite performant. James looks handsome with the beard. Yes, he does. I don't have one anymore, so boom. <laughs> Maui and Wasm. Wasm is absolutely something that, you know, is on the radar. Um, it's not anything that we're committing work to at this point, but um, we want to, again, understand what the, what the needs are, how it would be used, what would you expect to happen? Would you be using it for your whole app or for, like, widgets within your app that would be going to a web hosted in a broader context or, or how? Um, so it's on the radar. We definitely have some interest in it, um, but we need to understand better what the actual customer value is before we invest engineering resources into tying that all together. Anything else you see, James, that I ought to talk, talk to? I don't think so. Any uh, final comments or concerns, questions, or anything? Maddie? Thanks for bearing with us, everybody. Maddie's muted. Oh, there you go. You're, no, you're not muted. muted. Sorry. I'm good. Okay. Sorry, See God, I interrupted. <laughs> There's a very Peace slight out. delay between much. Skype. <laughs> there is a slight delay. Uh, all right, thanks, everyone, for hanging in there. All right, bye. bye. Yep. See you around.